So I'm here because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> Literally. When John Warner asked me would I give a TED talk, I looked at my calendar, Sunday, November 5th. There was nothing there. I had nothing going on today. So that's why I'm here. My old life, I would have had many things going on today. Uh, many appointments, double booked, etc. And this year, I've learned how to do nothing, and it has changed my life. And I've learned to find blessings in being bored. And so today, I want to talk to you about how nothing is what matters the most. So for me, I'm a venture capitalist entrepreneur. I've invested in over 100 companies and started a lot of companies. And my friends wouldn't call me a type A. They'd call me a triple A, triple plus. I would run around frenetically. There wasn't anything I didn't take on. I had no idea how to relax. And in fact, I lived my life with a point system. So every day, I woke up trying to accumulate points. And I would give myself points for everything I did, personally and professionally, driving the kids to school in the morning, helping with the kids, uh, going to my office, doing deals, raising money, exercising, doing whatever it is. I was accumulating points, trying to gather trophies to put on my shelves. And the sad thing is, at the end of each day, regardless, I never added up the points. I don't know if they were tens or hundreds or thousands. And sadly, each morning when I woke up, I had zero points. I never felt good about myself, regardless of what I had accomplished the night before, the day before. I always had a sense of, I should do more. And such self-criticism, coulda, woulda, shoulda, that I kept pushing myself and pushing myself without any, without any moment of, of somehow having those points. So uh, earlier this year, things were going great. Uh, business was great. I had qualified for the Maccabea Games, the Jewish Olympics, and squash 45 and over to represent Team USA, and I had Super Bowl tickets and party passes, and this was definitely the year to have Super Bowl tickets if you were a Patriots fan. Well, um, in the space of a very short moment, two weeks, my life changed dramatically. Uh, I realized that my marriage was falling apart, I was gonna get divorced, my CFO resigned, my personal assistant of 10, weeks res 10 years resigned, I had some other family trouble, and on top of that, I ruptured my Achilles, my left leg, for the second time. And as a result of that, my doctor put me on 40 days of bed rest. I had Achilles surgery and bone surgery because I ripped my Achilles completely off my bone. I was put on 40 days of bed rest where I had to have my left foot elevated in a cast above my heart for 23 hours a day, basically immobilized. I was in a tremendous amount of pain. It was very uncomfortable being immobilized. And I was scared. I was scared that I would um, not be able to play tennis or squash, which I loved, or run. I was even worried, would I be able to walk again? A friend of mine, Jay, said, Andy, look for the blessing in the journey. And I thought about the overwhelming circumstances that I faced. And what came to mind was Muhammad Ali fighting George Foreman in the famous Rumble in the Jungle in 1974 in Zaire. And George Foreman was beating Muhammad Ali up round after round. In the seventh round, Muhammad Ali was against the ropes, taking punch after punch. And he famously said, he said, George, is that all you got? Is that all you got? And that dispirited George, and it motivated Muhammad Ali to win the fight. And for me, with all the turbulence in my personal and professional life, I looked at the universe and I said, is that all you got? Is that all you got? So with my bed rest, my first challenge was required my triple A, triple plus brain to solve. And the problem was I couldn't turn my light on and off. I had a bedside lamp. I'm lying in bed immobilized, my left leg in a cast above my heart. And I wasn't able to reach over to turn the light on to wake up in the morning and start to read, and I wasn't able to turn it off when I wanted to nap. So I thought about it, and I put together two shoelaces, and I tied it to the cord, so then I could literally just reach over and turn the light on and off. That was the first and last time I used my old triple A, triple plus um, to solve my bed rest. And with that, with the intense pain and suffering I was going through, I completely surrendered myself. I made the decision I wasn't gonna do any work for 40 days. I wasn't gonna watch any TV or any movies. And 
what I did every day was I read and I meditated. And then my teenage daughter, Lucy, gave me a journal with a gnome on it. I happen to love gnomes, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> So what I did every day was I read, I wrote, and I meditated, and frankly, I would just stare at the wall for hours and hours, day after day. My big activity was taking a shower every three days with assistance from a nurse, and she would help me get from my bed into the shower with all of the, you wouldn't even believe what was required, and I'm strong, but to make sure I didn't hurt my leg, I didn't get it wet, I didn't fall, after the shower, I'd be exhausted in a chair in my bathroom. I'd look on the shelf, and I would see these trophies and medals to motivate myself to get back. Well, I literally was doing nothing. And early on in the bed rest, at one point, I said, I feel great about myself. I was like, I'm, I felt so good. And I thought, how is this possible for me to feel good about myself when I literally had done nothing? In my old point system, there would have been no points. But somehow, I was able to find stillness in the midst of chaos. And so the metaphor that I want to offer you is the ladder. So if you look at this ladder and observe the geometry, 15% of the surface area are the rungs, and 85% is air. And all of the growth and development happens as you climb the space between the rungs and achieve that air. And so for me, um, the old way I did things, when I would travel, if I could do five meetings better than four, 10 meetings better than eight, if I could do 12 meetings a day with multiple breakfasts and multiple lunch and pack it all in, the better. But I found so many meetings that were an hour that I wish were three or five minutes. And that was because they were all structure. There was no space for growth and creativity. And then there were the meetings that were an hour that I wish were five hours, because those were so meaningful, where I was really engaged with my heart and body and, heart and soul and mind. So I redid my life, and I said, how can I eliminate as much as possible so that the structure of the ladder is minimized, but stable, and maximize the amount of space for air and creativity? So if you imagined a ladder where the ratio of rung to air was 50-50, the rungs would be so thick, you wouldn't be able to climb. So it reminds me of a quote by Vladimir Horowitz, one of the greatest pianists of all time. And they said, Vladimir, how are you able to play the notes, the music, so much more beautifully than anyone else? And he said, it is not the notes that I play more beautifully. It is the pauses. So now what I want to do is I want to take my framework of the latter and give you a strategy for how to implement this in your professional and your personal life and how to deal with people. And it really has to do with decision making. And I call it the I, we, and you framework. I are my decisions. When I'm making them, don't get involved with me. When it's we, let's work together and figure out how to do it. And then when it's you, it's your decision. I should have nothing to do with you as you're making your decision. So if you apply the latter, the I and the we, when I'm involved, whether by myself or together, that's the ladder, that's the structure. And I want to minimize those as few as possible. And the you decisions, the your decisions when you're with other people, that's the air, the creativity, that's the space between the rungs, maximize that. And the way that you do this is you have to give up control and you have to have trust. So in my bed rest, I remember early on, my general counsel of 20 years, Tracy, came to my room. She was on the bed, on the, not the bed, she was on the floor in my bedroom, and she was sitting there looking at me. I was in my bed, and she could see the intense pain that I was in. And we were talking about all the things that needed to get done in all the companies over the next 40 days. And she just said, Andy, we've got you covered. You can just do nothing. And with that, I surrendered myself, I gave up control, completely trusted Tracy and my team at the office to take care of everything at the office so that I could take care of things at home and heal my heal and my, take care of my health. The favorite part I had of each day were my daily desserts with my daughter, Lucy. And she would have a full day of so many things that she did at school, so much vibrance and energy. And she'd, at the end of the day, come to my room, and I had done nothing all day. And she would bring me a dessert. It would usually be an apple or a bowl of strawberries. And it was so simple and sweet. 
And because I had done nothing all day, I was more available to give her space as we were able to talk about what was going on. And I remember one day after she had, we had talked, she sent me a text. Teenagers still text a lot. And uh, the text said, Dad, you know, I'm so glad we got to talk tonight. I really appreciate your openness. It meant so much to me. And by the way, I'm so sorry that I'm such an annoying teenager sometimes. Love, Lucy. So um, when there's a major catalyst, they're easy to make change. And I want to um, save you this catalyst of a double Achilles rupture, rip your Achilles off your heel bone, have turbulence in your personal and professional life. And so how can I do that and help you learn the lesson that I learned about how to do nothing? So I wanna tell you the way I woke up this morning. The first thing I did was I turned on my light and you can see my gnome journal that my daughter Lucy gave me, and you can see the string. I'm actually strong enough and capable of turning on and off the light by myself. But I keep the lamp with the shoestring that I came up with during my bed rest as a reminder of my bed rest when I learned to do nothing. I went to the shower afterwards, and after taking a shower, I then looked at my shelf where I used to have all my trophies. But since I gave up the point system, this morning, when I looked at my shelf, I saw nothing. So for each and every one of you, I need you to do something. And when that something is nothing. I need each of you, whether it's today, tomorrow, or sometime this week, to take five or 10 minutes to free yourself of expectations and judgment and just do nothing. I believe that you will find yourself in a state of blessed boredom. And I firmly believe that to live a life full of meaning, you have to learn to do nothing. Thank you.